Hi, how are you? Hi, I am. I'm in a lot of pain, actually. I <laughs> there, I got better for a while, and um, and then Julie, and then we did ask the coach last night, and I was excited for Julie, and then I got her. I hadn't seen her data yet from the race, and I did, and I, I think in my jumping up and down, yelling and fist pumping, um, I I might have ex- undone uh, another set of stitches. So we're going to the we're going to the doctor, Thanks, Mar- Julie. I know, right? I, I, this is why no one can take me anywhere and, and really shouldn't try. Um, but it, the, the stuff is really good. And I heard from her uh, a little earlier today, and um, I hadn't realized that she had had to, the reason she didn't want to talk was because she didn't want to talk herself down, knowing that like a, a 50K PR, 50 mile PR wasn't going to be possible due to heat. And I'm like, what? She did not see what I saw in the numbers. And I'm like, I wanted to make sure, number one, that there was a narrative out there other than hers because women are always going to be too humble. We're not allowed to be proud or ambitious. Mm-hmm. And I don't really care about any of that. Um, and maybe it's because I can't say these things about myself. I'm just going to say them for every other woman. Look how amazing this is. And maybe we can someday in life, my life will be worth living if I can get everyone in that habit of just, you know, emulate me. Uh, for say that I'm going to say all the things she can't say. So let's say all the things that Julie uh, isn't, let's look at all the things that Julie might not be seeing right now. Um, and I realized as a coach, this could be a fun thing to Yay, start. Yay, I can't wait, I can't wait. Show me, show me everything. All right, do you have, if you got you check your email very quickly, you'll see a PowerPoint slide that I sent you. Mm-hmm. Uh, where I've got my, my beautiful, gorgeous, uh, sexy husband made and uh, sent to me, because he can do that in seconds and my skills are rusty. Let's see. I'm opening up my email. I just got in from PT where, as I told you, I had to fish a bead out of Roz's nose in the middle of my PT doing Graston on me. So this is my my first crack at my email in a minute. Hashtag mom life. Hashtag mom life. So hard. MK PowerPoint. Okay. Yes, I have it. I'm looking at it. Are we going to share screens in this this recording? Are you going to share screen or do you want me to? If you could share screen and then um, if you have, I don't know if you have a, a pan or you can just sort of like highlight as we go, um, just to make sure I was like, we don't have anything too fancy to do all this stuff with yet, okay. but I will talk you through the relevant data points. And also let everyone know we are going to be organizing a webinar to talk through training peaks with our clients. Uh, we will give you uh, the opportunity to sign up for this later. We're going to be doing it in a few weeks, but uh, I'm not going to be teaching you all of the ins and outs of training peaks. What I do want to do is change your focus when you go in there. Since after all, I am the one that made you use it. It's the easiest way to deliver uh, a training plan for one person to another and track progress and look for wins. So we're going to, I'm going to show you where the wins live. Um, since y'all tend to start in the wrong places, no offense intended. Here we are. Here's my screen. So now I'm going to go into slideshow mode so we can see everything. Yay. Yay. All right. Walk us through. If you look at the one on the right, July 20th, 2019, 9 o'clock AM, the set on the right is a screenshot that of Julie's run, the 50, the, uh, the Vermont 100 K. Okay. Where would you start in this analysis coach, Sarah? Like you're, you're the coach you know, you've not been able to really keep track of her because there's no live race tracking in most ultras. You, all you can depend on is the infrequent postings of their friends and loved ones who are not coaches and don't know what you are looking for. So all you've heard is she looks great. She's a little tired. It's disappointing to be so hot. And then you get this in your inbox. What is the first number you look at? Well, uh, because I do not speak training peaks and I am, I, I am yeah. more of a noob when I'm looking at this, I see, oh my God, um, total time less than three days at the fair. What? Before we, before we even go there first, like, well, yeah. we'll, we'll get to that in a minute because okay. we're going to use three days at the fair as a reference point. Got it. And I'm okay. just going to walk you through the logic. So just asking you to look at the right-hand side. And not- we start at the right-hand side. We never start. We start with the pure data set we, before we move on to a comparison uh, and relative benchmarking. Okay. So average heart rate 145 in that heat. That's pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and also the training stress score of enormousness that's another 
that that that's a bigger training stress score than I have ever seen in my own training peaks. That's for sure. Okay. Those are the numbers that jump out at me. Okay. Do you know, tell me a little bit about that, that relative training stress score. What is, what does that number mean? When do you see it? When does it matter? You're on the right track. Uh, so I, I really, <clears throat> I've only ever seen my own and I have heard you say that an easy effort run of an hour should be a relative training stress score of about 100, give or take. Mm -hmm. Um, so if I run what I think is easy effort for an hour and my training stress, stress score is way above that, then something, something's up. Yep. Um, and you're going to notice that and you're probably going to have some questions for me. Totally. Totally. So when you look at this relative training stress score of 1,150, uh, just keep that in your mind and then the context will pop when we, when we kind of move over. Um, and then, cause it, like, and I say this a lot and I know I say this and people are always like, I don't know. Data is more than being on one side of a greater than less than side. That's second grade logic at best. That's not math and that's not analysis, but that's what we do. Because the first place, a lot of people, the temptation is to start with pace um, without having backed out of the data set to be like, what are we really comparing here? Mm -hmm. So, but so those, so what the, so you, you notice the RTSS, you looked at the average heart rate. What else are, what else are we paying attention to? At what else it makes this race, this race relevant? Oh, the elevation. I mean, mm -hmm. holy fucking elevation, like yep. 9,180 feet. I, you mentioned last night when we were doing as the coast, you, you mentioned Mount Sunrise. Is that right? Sunshine. Sunshine. Um, mm -hmm. I don't even have a frame of reference for that. Like we don't have mountains that big in the Northeast. And I, I mean, this race was in Vermont. So she, she was going up and down some serious mountains. Um, yep. Yeah, that's, that, that is an insane amount of elevation over 61 miles. Everyone in Colorado right now and uh, the Canadian Rockies is looking at you and saying, oh, that's so cute. You think Vermont's serious mountains. No offense. No, uh, that's what I'm saying. We don't have mountains that big. I know that she was running in Vermont and in order to get that amount of elevation, she had to have been going up and down a lot because we just don't, that, like that doesn't exist over here. Totally. I, I just said, someday you'll get to see the look at my husband's face, invite him to come skiing with you at your cabin in Vermont and see what, and just like, the look of shock. It's, it's kind of You weird. think I have a cabin in Vermont. No, That's just, adorable. I mean, what's, what's adorable <laughs> is that like, you would think you would need to have that in order to say it. I would say it just to like, see the look on his face. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I, I dig her. No, no, offense to, no offense to anyone in Vermont. It's just, uh, but as, as if I, uh, if it, I went to college in Vermont. Vermont's fantastic. You got to love it on its merits. And um, it, there, there are good races there. Some of this, it, like really respect the hills that Julie lives on and around um, in, in Utah and the, the things that people are doing when they're trying to qualify for Western states, understanding why you can't just run any race really quickly and use that to qualify for Western states. When it comes to ultra marathons, there are echelons. There are races that are considered to be good beginner ultras, all of which, I mean, ultra marathoning is hard, period. Some are harder than others. And the variance is much larger than what we have in road races because you're going places that cars can't go. So to that effect, yes, absolutely. Elevation is incredibly relevant. So she climbed oh, right. a mountain. She didn't descend. She just climbed, just climbed from roughly um, where you would be starting at the trailhead in Denver outside of Denver, but doesn't matter, all the way to the top. That's, that's what she did. But we, people here call it climbing. We climbed, we started. It's like you, you started halfway up. That's kind of cheating, but whatever. Okay, so those are the biggest numbers. People like to look at, the, at calories, like, oh my God, 8,000 calories. That number matters. Uh, but again, we'll come back to why in a minute. That's how many calories she burned just by being out there for that long. Um, and again, this is one of the reasons why I get really nervous when I'm training someone that wants to, uh, when someone approaches me wanting to train for an ultra. Because uh, if you're doing this to lose weight, it's a really good way to make terrible choices. Um, when I say it is a nutrition game and you must work with a nutritionist if we're going to do this, that is why there comes a point when you're out there, when food sounds terrible, like you are, imagine that the, 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 yeah. the, the cap on your gas tank that you would use to stick the, the nozzle in to, 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 to pump it up is getting smaller over the course of a road trip. And it's going to get trickier and trickier to get gas into the tank. That's effectively what's happening with your stomach the longer that you're out there. The more closely something imitates your blood sugar, the more likely you are to vomit every time it hits, uh, every time it hits your stomach. So it is truly uh, like an endurance game, a nutrition game, and a patience game. Um, and as you'll see, a fitness game. 
The third, the third, the final number that I pay attention to is um, that book, if you haven't guessed it yet, is the intensity factor. So when you look at that relative intensity factor underneath it, it's a point zero point seven three. Do you remember the rule of thumb about the intensity factor? Uh, that you want it to be under one? Yes. Four. Uh, or I, that's the only thing I remember. <laughs> okay. I want it under one for an easy effort run. For an that easy effort run, yeah. An hour or shorter. Anything over a one um, is going to be not either, it's going to be a red flag. If I see that, I then look down further because the email doesn't tell you average heart rate. It's not, you don't get to pick what comes in the email to you. If I saw a number over one, that would be a big signal to me to then click into the app itself to see what happened. And all of this becomes second nature when you get as many emails of these each day as I do, like the, the sure. process is sort of secondary. So those so, are the numbers. So those Julie's are the intensity factor was 0.73 for this race? Yep. What? This tells me how fit she is. It tells me how fit she is, one, and two, how smartly she's running. Because oh my God. race day, as she was doing a road marathon, she would have permission to go harder than easy efforts when she felt the need, when she was able. The question is like how much harder than easy effort and for how long? This is why I spin out when people talk to me about training to a pace for a marathon. And I'm like, that's actually not how it works. And there's no telling them that. More so on a trail where there, when you walk in, you roll up to the start line expecting to have to walk for certain periods. So you really have to know how, like knowing your fitness, it's not a judgy thing. It's knowing, okay, if I run up, this hill, how long is it going to take my heart rate to recover? If um, I'm going to, if I'm going to run down this hill, how much time do I need to recover after the previous effort? If I get my heart rate up to like 173, how long on flat ground is it going to take for it to drop? And what, how, what does that feel like? And how do I know when I'm out of the feel zone later in the day when I've been out there for 16 hours and I can't feel anything? then these relative metrics become really, really, really important. So seeing that number there lets me know that she's running a smart, ultra long distance race. That number has meaning that would not, that it means something very different than what you would see when you're training for a road race or if you're, if you're mm -hmm. primarily a road person. So there's no really good number. It's just like, it, it, it really depends on the context. Mm -hmm. um, so if this is over a one, I wouldn't be judging, but I would also be like, for, a, for an event this long, that is incredibly hard to do and I would be very concerned. Yeah. So the final thing that I would tend to look at um, on this before moving over um, is pace only because I can never get through anything with a runner without talking about pace. And I know this sounds really silly. I've just made you circle like every number in front of you. Yeah, I'm, wor I'm working right now. Okay. So you can, uh, as, as soon as I'm done working, I'll be able to come fix it. I heard you. The problem is that the thing is done and I'm not available to go press the button to turn it off. So it's going to be okay. Yes, I know. Daddy is upstairs and he'll be able to turn it off for you. Sorry. I'm really sorry. I am. I, I... No, it's okay. It's going to okay. make it really quick to go through the rest okay. of the numbers because this is all the setup. So okay. to be really clear, Julie just ran 100K on one of the hottest days of the year, a day so hot that the New York City Marathon, due mostly to politics, um, decided to cancel, the, sorry, the New York City Triathlon decided to cancel the triathlon for political reasons. This, so this is facing that she woke up disappointed, went to bed disappointed, thinking there's no way I'm going to PR today. And because of that, she still managed to miss what she actually did do so when you then take over on this 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 ultra marathon on a trail hot day outside nutrition game can't really fever and that's it sorry okay. it wasn't fever and that's it <laughs> all right we're good no no, no I, I apologize for that we're good no it's all good i promise i'm going to finish before you've gone through another frozen fever in its entirety because that is like 20 minutes long um so with uh, look, looking all that numbers on the right average pace. Now with all of that, we're going to turn, look to the left, look, look okay. into the left. Julie wanted to distance PR three days at the fair. Um, and we never really talked about why I just remember that, that video where I'm like, yay, she's done. And Samara's like, Oh, she's still, Oh, she wants a distance. Yeah. PR. Um, so that this is from that day. When you look at the mileage the mileage is higher. When you look at the time, yeah, it was a little bit longer, which is to be expected because she ran two more miles, but here's the kicker, right? When you look at, if you were to just get, guess, base this off the pace, she ran exactly 20 something seconds slower per mile 
on a trail in an event with 9,000 feet of vertical gain. Yeah. Going up Mount Sunshine, up Mount Sunshine, one way. She could have been hiking. She wasn't. She was running a lot of it on a really hot day in really bad conditions that are for sure going to throw off your, your nutrition and your hydration strategy. Like all of a sudden, this game just got a hell of a lot harder before you got to the start line. And she was roughly putting, it was like, her body was like, whatever, I got it. And it's the same intensity factor. She ran an equally smart race. And, but look again at the relative training stress score. Mm -hmm. Her body was like, whatever. This thing that I would argue, 9,000 feet of vertical gain on a trail and requiring more power, running up a mountain on a really hot day was no more difficult and no more stress on her body than running loops on pavement around a parking lot for 24 hours and three days at the fair. That's pretty amazing. That in and of itself is pretty amazing. Yeah. Look at the caloric consumption and look at how much higher that is. That's roughly like that, that alone tells you as a, it's not like a perfect proxy, but it's a pretty good proxy. So it's roughly 8,800 calories that she, that she burned um, on the course um, out at, at Vermont and at three days at the fair, 8,100. Again, it's not like, well, what's the good number of caloric burn? It's the difference that matters. For an mm -hmm. event, like that, that, that shows you 700 more. Roughly when you're out there for someone Julie size, I'm gonna ballpark it around 120 calories minimum that she needs to be putting in her body uh, per hour. So th this is seven hours worth of calories more difficult than what she did before, but it wasn't that much, her body was still like, whatever. She ran a smart race, she did, she trained smart, she did a great job, she did everything right. And that's how much stronger and how much more resilient she got in the very short period of time between May the 20th and July the 22nd. Wow. All of that is badass and really cool. But I, what I can't get over is that elevation gain, right? The elevation gain, like, so, is so what if it wasn't like a big old massive PR? Everything about this is so ridiculously badass that if you were to only look at like, whoa, it's a little slower, which I know she's not doing, but this is why PRs without context don't really matter much, um, at least not to me on the road or on a trail. It's super important. You can't not take, you can't ignore all of this context. This is a much harder event on a much difficult, more difficult day under in much more difficult conditions. Yeah, we weren't making bacon in three days at the fair, but it's not like bacon is the magic rocket fuel. It's just really good. I mean, no offense, vegans, vegetarians, I like bacon. Um, uh -huh. I was to Julie because they were making it. So that is what I saw when it came through. And I look at the average heart rate only 10 beats higher than what she did at three days at the fair, which arguably um, she could have executed much, much more it, it's a much different event, stop there, but it was only to her body marginally more difficult when in actuality, it was massively more difficult. I mean, this is an apples to orange comparison between the events, but her body's reaction to both events was minimal. And yeah. that is what gets me. And that is why I started crying when these hit my, because I knew some of these numbers, I'd, I'd looked at them the night before. And I knew what I was looking for. And I don't share this with people because I don't, if, you, if she knew that before she went out, then that's pressure. And I don't want to change her instinct um, because, but this would, each, each data set informs the conversation, the next conversation I have with the person. Coming out of three days at the fair, um, the conversation I was having with her was, hey, you know what, we're getting back on the trails. It's going to be less of a time suck. You're going to be way happier. It was just sort of a reset. This isn't going to feel like very much, and you're going to have a hard time trusting it. But mm -hmm. don't forget why we were doing so much before. You're going to feel like we let you out of prison because you're not going to have to worry about all the things that we were worried about before that was driving all of the work that we were doing. Um, with all that aside, and I also, like a week ago, said, I want you to, we, what you haven't done yet is gone out there and raced. I want you to see what your body can do. And I want you to, if the day provides the opportunity, I want you to have it. And I know in her mind, that didn't happen. She feels like she didn't get the opportunity to really go see what she has. My counterpoint is, yeah, you did. This just wasn't the race in your mind that you thought you were going to get to have. You thought you were going to get to go much faster than you actually did, that you would be managing way less. If it had been cool and in the 60s, what you guys had at Rocky Raccoon, it would have been a wildly different day than this. 
at the same time, that does not mean that this day sucked. This day is so good. I'm going to start crying as well. I'm really proud of you, Julie. You did an amazing job. I, I, I was a couple states away from you, and this heat has been ridiculous. I, I am so, so, so amazed and inspired. It's really incredible. Yeah. Incredible. MK's crying for real, you guys. Oh, Julie. That's all I wanted to say. I just wanted to make sure if any of and this is what you're, this is what Julie did. She walked away feeling a little disappointed. And if ever you've done that and you don't see what you actually did, that's then come find me. You are looking at it wrong. And I guarantee that's what most women do all the time. I know men, men do men do it just as just as just as frequently, but don't miss what you actually did when you're letting go of an expectation that might not have made sense in the first place. We got to see what you're made of, Julie, and it's fucking steel. It's oh, you're making me cry too. That's what we do. We downplay we're women. We've been conditioned to do it. Be modest. Don't brag. Well, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna brag, Julie. You were a brick shit house and it was glorious to watch you run out <laughs> I am proud to have hand, but I'll be damned if I'm gonna sit back silently and be like, This is what the day was when I don't think you see what that day was and how beautiful it actually is. That's amazing. I'm still amazed looking at it that's it not to shame anyone that gets excited about finish times you can have goals you can have all you can want all kinds of things i'm never going to tell you there's wrong with wanting what it is you want i'm going to tell you there's something very wrong with looking at what you did and invalidating it don't piss in your own cheerios and don't be on your bed these are two conversations i'm going to have to have that latter conversation with my kid when he gets home because uh, peeing in the bed is a thing, but mm. coach if you're not doing that so if, you, if i'm going to if you're not going to let your kid pee in their bed you should stop yourself from being in your own Cheerios too because your coach, your love, your winning at life. And I hope you see all the beauty in what you just did, Julie, because I couldn't be more proud. Yay.